unfortunately. I said he ain't like me and you, he's worth a bit of money now, uh, Connie. I'll give you George's number. So, what, 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 what's your lasting memory of all them times in? Not like they say in the books, no? Glamorous. Alright, alright. It's a lot of nonsense. Look, so much nonsense written about it, you know. Which is why I, I decided to write a book and tell the truth about it for a change. I've read it, it's very, it's very good to be honest, it's honest. It's very honest. People say to me, they were lovely boys. I said, well, that shows me that you never met them, you never knew them. Because they were, they were just fucking animals, you know, they weren't lovely boys at all. The twins are on about, yeah? Yeah. It's, I mean, throughout this, but it's, it's that, any of these people who set themselves up, they always turn on their own, don't they? Well, that's what I, that's what I've never got. All they did was hurt their own. I mean, the, Cornell was one of their own. For no reason. McVitie was one of their own. No, McVitie, of course, no, no reason at all, apart from Ronnie screaming at Randy, come on, you tell him you've done your one, I've done mine, you coward, get out and do yours. Yeah, but that was their own people, and they're going to never hurt their own, but they did, didn't they? That's all they ever hurt was their own people. Do you, do you ever hear from that Ian Barry now? He's gone, isn't he? I don't know, last I heard he was in the nick studying yoga. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people go in the neck and neck. Some of them are religious, you know, some of them, he's gone to yoga. Yoga. <laughs> I imagine him in his cell doing yoga. Yeah, I know I can, yeah. I'm afraid I'm doing that again. <laughs> See me done that way. Yeah. He says he was crazy. I see me done, what was his name? Uh, Ian Barry. I see me done, see me done that way. Good <laughs> yeah, he, he, was, he was what they called Ronnie's man. Yeah, that's what I've, yeah. He's Joe, he's Joe, wasn't he? Or was he, was he his right hand man? Supposed to be his, his minder sort of thing, you know. Although we never used the word minder. He was Ronnie's man. Yeah. You know, was he Andy Albert or? No. I had him screaming one night down the Regency. Because he, he was snugging Tommy Cowley's dead gone. He was snugging his missus in front of everybody. So I pulled him up and he picked up a bottle and faced me. So I give him a slap and he ran in the stock room and hit the stacks of beer crates and he hit it, squeezed himself in amongst his crates. And he screamed, don't hit, don't hit me, don't hit me. Just screaming like a schoolgirl we were. Really? And I said, be very careful, mister. I'll kill Ronnie. So the next morning, they had a meeting at Bunny Hill Road, so I went up there. I didn't know what was going to happen, you know, but nothing was said. I knew he was a flash little bastard, you know. Was he? But they only went so far with me, and then I stopped him. Who, who was the boy in that little firm then? Who, the, the, the big Tommy, they reckon he was that, and the big geezer. The big Tommy, he was a professional farmer. Yeah, he was Andy. Who, who was the real men amongst them then? Who was the real boys amongst them then? Amongst that little firm, who could have a row amongst all them then? Me? Yeah. Running Bender a bit. But I went, I went right through the lot of them. Yeah, what about Lambiano then? No. To put, he crittened himself tap Tony. Tap his <laughs> shit, I called him. Tap his shit. Tap Tony. Is that what he called himself? Well, he, yes, he called himself. Nobody, nobody <laughs> else called him. We had a little game. It's nothing to be proud of, but yeah. we used to stand in the Regency and four of us in a, in a little group looking over each other's shoulders so we couldn't be approached by anybody. Yeah. And we'd say, right, it's your turn. And we'd then pick a face in the crowd and give them a hard look. And usually they'd come over and say, good evening, boys. If you'd like a drink, we get a drink off them. Yeah. And that's how I met them I stared at him and he came over and said, hello, boys. I'm trying to get Make out he was on the firm again. Yeah. He was always pretending he was on the firm. He was just a gopher, you know. And so he said, so we said, yeah, we'll all have a drink. And he drifted in. 
So he's just like a tea boy then really, wasn't it? <laughs> he did everything he was told, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, you call the shovel a shovel anyway, that's good. Um, I'm trying to think of the others. There's two Lambianos, aren't there? Tony Ian Tony Barry. Barry. Chris, Chris went with him. Yeah, he found God. He's yeah. up in Bangladesh and we're looking after young delinquents. Or Is he? What a role model. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's all right. You getting all right with Charlie? Yeah. No. Yeah. People said Charlie wasn't as bad as him. He was because he used to do it behind the scenes. Yeah. He was into everything. Trying to make out he wasn't. He was always involved in the. Yeah, Brian. Right. That lady wants to get out. He was always what? Snyder. Fred, she gave me another one, Fred, I meant to, so that's good. 
If it comes to a shimon, I've only got one gun to handle now instead of two. I mean, one gun is, is more yeah. than enough, but, but at least I'd have half a chance, you know. And he put his gun behind his ear and bow. That was it. And they took off. Got to Barcelona and said, drop me here. So they opened the back up and I got out. Because to me it was logical. I'm a, I'm a piggy in the middle, I'm a complete, I'm the, the south line of the firm, east line of the firm, I'm a piggy in the middle. Yeah. I, I should have gone logically, you know. Yeah. And I, I'm walking away from the van. Definitely going to get one. Now went back to the flat we all wiped it down, a wet cloth and a dry cloth, wiped, wet and dry right through, every, every surface. And they were all saying, we heard the bangs, what did you do to them? I said, shut up our bangs, and his car backfired. Only when the girl was getting a bit excited. And I phoned Reggie and said, the dog, that dog won. She said, I said, the dog is dead, but I never said, the dog won. That was to tell Reggie that Mitchell was off the plot, you know. Yeah. And uh, so he said, well, bring her up to Lederman's flat. Yeah. Old Sammy Lederman had a little flat up in Whitechapel. Yeah. So I took her up and I said, listen, he's going to ask you a few questions. Whatever you do, don't start saying bang. Don't say bang at all. Don't even mention the word bang. I said, that way you go fucking swimming. I said, the river's just round the corner, you go swimming. So, no bangs. Anyway, we got in the flat, she went in the back room with Reggie. When she came out, she was smiling, so I knew she'd passed the interview. So yeah. Poor little cat. Her mind was gone, she said to me, because Connie was sitting in the passenger seat and he just kept laughing. And I don't know why. She says, when it's my turn, will you do it? She said, because I think you'll do it quick. Oh, fucking hell. Her mind must have been gone. Yeah. Poor little cat. What, what did they do him? What, what did they do him? Well, it don't make sense, it's just it took him on the street. They thought they could control him, but he'd been to Rampton, Broadmoor, all the top necks. He'd been birched, catted, cat nine. If they'd have turned him on the street, he'd have been picked up in no time, wouldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Problem solved. Well, he could, they could have fucked just spoke the old bill and said he's in the flat in Barking, yeah. Yeah. And the old Bill Andrew, it's their job. Yeah. But Dad was supposed to go and see him. But he didn't go to the flat. So he said, tell him I want to see him. He said, don't come around here, I'll go around there. Because they'd been writing to him in Dartmoor. Yeah. Their address of their mother there, Valence Road. So they got a bit shouty about that. That's when they decided to do it. And what about Cornell? What was the real reason to do him? Or was it well, never? We were at war with Richardson's yeah. firm. That was definite war, that one. Nothing to do with all these calling Ronnie names and that, no. Yeah, I suppose you call him a fat put. Well, he wasn't a fat put. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. That, that was, I mean, he'd been called worse things than that in his life. He yeah. Was, he'd go around shooting people. That was just the papers talking, that. they weren't yeah, true, didn't they? It was just uh, supposition, you know, they make up these yeah. um, theories. And what about McVitie? There was no need to do that, was there? Who? McVitie. No need at all. In fact, a couple of weeks before the McVitie business, McVitie, me and Reggie were in the restaurant in the Regency having supper together. Now, if there'd been any aggravation over the smell of it, you know, nothing, not a thing. And then, but Ronnie was always screaming at Reggie, it's your turn, you coward, you, why don't you do your, I don't mind, you know, yeah. but, uh, Cornell. So, anyway, he was invited to the party. He would never turn a party down that be Popping pills and booze, and he was a crazy guy, but it was, it was likeable, you know. Yeah. There was nothing wrong. Everyone with said that, I've spoke to, said he was alright. He came in the Regency one night, I suppose, about a shotgun. He said, Is any of the firm in the old blood of fuckers away? I was down in the. We had a, we had an afters bar down, right down in the basement. Yeah. Behind uh, upholstered doors and everything. Couldn't hear a sound in there. 
I said to Johnny Barry, I'll go up. He said, no, don't. He said, he's got a shirt, but he's, he's out of his head. He said, I'll get rid of him. Anyway, he, he went. So they thought somebody else's theory was that because he threatened the firm, that's why Reggie done it. But, but they, took, they invited him to this party in Everett Road and just. Bender got a knife from the kitchen, one of them fucking kitchen uh, yeah. carving knives, you know, and he just started stabbing it in the head, the face, stabbing it everywhere. In the end, he got him in the throat and twisted it. Well, he did it in the throat and twisted it. And I was sent round to decorate the place. <laughs> so I'm a decorator. Yeah. So I went round there and the girl, the girl whose flat it was, Blonde Carol. And another girl, uh, Ronnie Hart's girl, yeah. Vicky. They were on their hands and knees with there. And Vim, Vic, mocking this up. And it, was, it wasn't a splash of blood, it was a pool of blood. It was like somebody put a beast down or something. Yeah. And I took paper, I painted the walls with this, you get this brown paper and it's got a uh, bitumen on one side. Yeah. It's specially made for basement flats, it's waterproof. So I went down the whole lot. And it must have been a good job because Nipperee told me, when the forensic team went in, they found traces, but they couldn't have stand up in court. And they said, it could have been human blood, it could have been woman's makeup, or it could have been horse radish. Now that's, that's not forensic evidence. No, is it, you know? no. That wouldn't have stood up at all. Anyway, I'm sitting in Brixton. I'm walking across the uh, the yard. And big Tommy Brown's coming out of Avon. I'll come out of the hospital because once you've been charged with murder, they put you in the hospital yeah. for observation in case you're suicidal. And he said, How's your missus? Talk about my missus. And the kids? I thought, that's a little warning to me. You know. What's he asking about my family? Bro? Anyway, I went on a solicitor's visit. This, now it's me and the three crazes sitting there. And this bent brief, the bent brief, Manny Freedy. All of a sudden, Freedy says, I'll go and get another chair. Again, I didn't think at the time. We went and got a chair. We brought it back. There's no way to put it because we, we were all sitting down anyway. Yeah. You know? We well, didn't need another chair. And that's when Ronnie said, He's got an idea. He said, We're going to get Ronnie Hart to stand up for McVitie. We're going to get uh, Scotch Jack to stand up for Cornell. We want you to stand up for Mitchell. I said, no, nah, I've never been there. Oh, why are you fucking look at me? You wouldn't have needed it at all. I would have dropped dead on the spot the way he looked at me. And, uh... Well, you didn't believe it, were you? Huh? Oh, did he believe it? Did he honestly believe some geezer had put his hands up for him? He, he thought, what he thought was that we were fright, still frightened of him, you know. We were still frightened of the craze, but it was me, Ronnie Hart and Jack Dix, Scotch Jack, we weren't frightened of him. So that was when I, my mother came to visit me with my my youngest son, who was a baby at the time. Yeah. And I slipped at his little note, tell him, get Nippery from Bow Street, tell him, if he wants the business, come and see him. And he came in. He went yes, sister. He said, why are you doing this? I said, because I'm sick of all this shit. And the nonsense, I said, I just want to get rid of you all. And there was no deal done, there was no deal. People said, you know, no deal, no deal. Even up to, when we went in the court, the court was buzzing and my brief said to me, I said, what's happening? He said, don't know, nothing's happened yet. <coughs> They're still waiting for official approval. He said, do you want to retract anything you've said? I said, no, just go get on with it. I'm winning. And, uh, good old judge. And he says, my, my barrister came in late. And then he started going on, you know, the guy and his barristers. 
but the judge said to him, Mr. Edwards, he said, you're leaning rather heavily on an open door. This is the judge's way of saying, shut up, you know, it's all been done. So he sat down, and then he said, right, take them down. So it was all in this specially built dock. And the screws took them down. And then, you know, we all went in our cells. Then the next thing, the door was open, and the, and the screw and the two, two coppers off the, the swing, he said, come on. We went and stood at the bottom of the stairs and the judge was peeling up the sentences. Ronald Cray, society has earned the right to arrest from your activity. You'll go to prison for a minimum of 30 years. Reginald Cray said, well, Johnny, you two years. <laughs> Funny, I was shocked myself. The, the screws and the coppers was arguing about how much I, I'd left to do. Because I'd been on remand for nine months. Yeah. Anyway, it worked out I had about six months left to do. But then, Callahan was home sick at the time. And for some reason, Nipper Reed came to see me at Mason Nick. He says, we've got a result for you. He said, you've got another three months knocked off the end of your sentence. I didn't hardly do that. I've done about six months time in the zoo, you know. Yeah. I was real pleased. And was you, you never had no grief since, have you? Well, in the early 70s, we were drinking in Bow, and uh, so me, a, a mate of mine's come in. So I've got no, no, no reason to get worried. He's a, he's a mate of mine. We went to sea together. We went to school together. Yeah. And he's got his people with him. He said, uh, he said, this guy, but Billy Amy's, I knew Amy's, I'd been in the nick with him. Yeah. He said, his, his aunt's got a pub opposite Rob Rowe Town. We're going up there. So we went up there and then we decided we're going to go to a club. So we get in the motor. We, me and this Amy, get in the motor, my motor, and the other little pile in the second one, back up motor. We're in Lower Thames Street, right by Tower Bridge, and uh, he starts his psychological shit. He says, I said, what club are we going to? He said, we many clubs. He said, we're not going to a club. He said, What's going through your mind? He said, are you frightened? What are you frightened of? I said, no, fucking frightened. Tie that shit with me, psycho stuff, you know. Anyway, you know when you've got them little consoles? Yeah, when you make yeah. People put loose change in there. He's got his hand in there. And I saw this little glint. So I grabbed his arm. And he's got fucking potato pillow in his hand. <laughs> Here's a tool to carry on a job like that. Yeah. Know? So I took it up and I stuck it in his face. Fucking crowded it went. Driver's window, windscreen, all over the dash. And he ran into a keep left, little keep left eye. So I'm out of the chucked the tool, got through it out on the roof. And I legged it because I know there's a backup motor coming. And I'm, I wind up in Fleet Street. And I went into a kiosk where the, the reporters used to use it, you know. So I went in, I'm going to put myself in, so I bought 40 cents, so uh, two boxes of matches. I come out and it's, you know them skinny little police yeah. box, the single one, not like the tide, it's a single yeah. one. And there's a copper sitting there. So I went up to him and he said, go away, go away. So I said, I'll get, I said, I think I just killed someone down the market. I was just, was that you? So he knew about it. So we stood there. About two minutes and the car pulls around the corner and I'm in the motor. It was so beautifully done. It was. Uh. And I'm sitting between two of the biggest couple that I ever seen in my life. Fucking great love, so was. And we're off to Vine Street, Nick. <coughs> well, that was pantomime on its own. We get in the squad room and these fucking great pots of coffee come out. Chucked me packs to me. Then he took me round the, the, the horse stables 
with the mounted police horses and kids. And he's explained to me how the horses are catching rheumatism because of the mess of the stable during yeah. And then back at the squad of more coffee. Never really got locked up at all. And what happened to the geezer? Well, they went. He didn't die, eh? No, no. <laughs> cut a lip in, cut an artery in his lip. Ah, right. <coughs> but they went to my house in Peckham. Yeah. And they caught the rest of them shouting through the letterbox. We didn't know how it was going to get out. So it proved that an Hindu scientist was going out. It was plotting you up, didn't know about the outcome. Anyway, they brought this guy back, this, this mate of mine, and I hit him on the chin in the squadron. I thought, I can help, the sticks are going to come out there. Nothing. Right, I made a statement, told him everything. Then the next, they let me find him a brief, he came in. He said, You haven't said anything about him? I said, I told him everything. Oh, he said, I thought you knew better than that. Oh, I said, Well, best. as it happens, it worked out best. You know? Yeah. The next thing is, they put me to the magistrate at 10 o'clock in the morning. I go and see the magistrate and he says, because you made a statement, he said, you are guilty, as natural. He said, but my sentence will reflect what, what I think of this case. He said, you'll find 25 pounds. Is that what you got done? So the, the brief paid the 25 quid. And, uh, well, that ain't, that ain't a bad, bad, bad result, is it? I took Amy up to the hospital, getting his lips on her, and he done a run around the hospital. Did he? I've been looking for him because he'd gone around impersonating police officers. And I didn't like him at all. Well, you weren't going to do a lot of damage with a potato peeler, was it? Uh, if you think, if he's coming he's only a mug, like that, he'd bring a proper tool. Yeah. He'd shoot her or something, you know. A potato peeler. He should be insulted. It was all lots of, <laughs> off that lower Thames Street, it was all slip waste in the river. Oh, right, yeah. The idea was, I'll go down the slipway, let the river take me, till my clothes are water, water locked, and then I'm going to... Yeah. Until the gas comes up, and then I'm going to come up again. I'll just be another float. What they call float is the river boys, they call them float. Yeah. Dead bodies in the river. Yeah. Uh, no. And, but they never come after me again. I, I stuck this in his face, I said, hey, tell him to send a man next time, do not a fucking idiot like you. I'll tell you what I'm asking, I remember, um, I thought it was a really good documentary, you couldn't have it really well. When you were on the escalators with, with Foreman, oh, yeah. do you remember that? Yeah. Did you ever get to speak to him, no, or didn't No, wasn't, that wasn't in the, in the game plan. But a lot of people says, what happened? Nothing happened. They all thought it was all on the same day, but in actual fact, they filmed me going up the escalator on the Tuesday, and they filmed him coming down. Ah, the right. So you weren't the together now. So we weren't actually together at all. Yeah. They just said Frank Frank Simmons did the the filming. He said, "When you go up, he said, when you spot him, he said, stare at him." <laughs> so I did, and they told me I I didn't see it, but they told me that Foreman turned away. He did, yeah. So I said. Take from that whatever you want, you know. Yeah. You're right, then, boys. They all thought I'd want some sort of dick because he turned away first. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he did come out of it well. He did come out of it well. We do a quick one right now.